If you ask most people what is their favorite arcade game, they'll usually come up with a fighting game as their top choice. For me, however, it's always been racing games. I would always use my tokens, all money as a kid, on machines like GTI Club where you had the end break handle that was so satisfying to use when you get to that one turn when the end break is actually relevant. So yeah, racing is my favorite arcade genre, and my favorite game in that genre is Sega Rally Championship. No matter what, I'll always play it when I'll see it in an arcade, even though I can play it on my PC every time. It's such a fun arcade experience with the time ticking down and you needing to beat it while still being in a race where you slowly climb up the ranks. And that great arcade game got an even better sequel 4 years later when Sega came out with Sega Rally Championship 2. It was a great sequel because it improved on anything from the previous game. Sega Rally 1 had two cars in it with automatic and manual gear selection. In Sega Rally 2, however, you have 18 different cars to pick from. You start with 7 of them already unlocked and then you can unlock one more from the arcade game mode in the game which gave you different cars depending on your game version. I remember having the Fiat Ciento because I played the Dreamcast version. In the PC version, however, you get the Renault Megane. Once you're finished with the arcade mode, you have the 10-year championship mode where you can unlock 10 more cars that you need to beat in each season. Each season had 4 tracks in them that would take you 1 minute or 2 to complete it, so ideally you could finish this entire campaign mode in an hour or so, including loading time and tinkering with your car. With 9 times the roster size of the previous game which had auto and manual version of the Toyota Celica and the Lancia Integral, in Sega Rally 2 non-arcades mode you had 4 gear setups, auto and manual with 2 different gear counts so you can tackle different courses the right way. In terms of cars I'd always pick the Lancia Stratus, it was my favorite car and I used it every time I played the game growing up mostly because my older brother told me it was the best car in the game. By the way guys, which one is your favorite car in the game and what car do you think was the best in the game? Leave it in the comments. Moving away from the cars, the game had introduced 17 courses. 7 of them are unique and 5 of them have 3 different variations each. Those variations were sometimes several minor changes that make the track different and some of those variations were completely different tracks like the snow ones, where every single one of them is a whole new track. Each track gave you a different challenge and in the 10 year championship mode you have the option to change the car settings so it would fit the track better, considering the weather and road condition of the track that would change from season to season, as well as how far ahead you can see if it's a track in the night time. You could change the tires, play with the suspension, front and back, steering, braking, acceleration and even change your co-driver who's shouting instruction to you to a female co-driver. And you would also see her on the podium in case you win with you which was way ahead of its time. This is a game from 1999 and it had included a female version which goes to show you how far they tried to make this game a full experience. The feminists of that time would definitely approve of Sega Rally 2. And it was those small details back in the day that made this such a great game considering how limited the hardware was and how many concessions you had to make when creating a game in the 90s. But not Sega Rally. You have different body kits when you race different tracks like a regular kit when you race the tarmac races and a desert kit for the desert tracks as well as the car getting muddy if you ever drive over a puddle of mud, and the car having snow on it as well in the snowy areas. Which is nothing in today's standards, but in 1999 when the game came out, this is almost a simulation level of detail, and again, when you have such a limited hardware like the Dreamcast, this is an amazing feat of technology, especially since Sega Rally was a one-disc game, unlike the three discs you had when you played Shenmue which was a detailed game as well. While the essence of the game was the arcade experience for the first Sega Rally, the Sega Rally 2 season mode is what made the game so great. It was made both for the noobs and for the pros, because when I was a 6 year old kid playing it, 
I struggled just to beat the time limit and get to the next season. And by trial and error, I managed to unlock all of them and later on, when I became even better, started winning some of those seasons and getting some new cars, which I sadly never used until I replayed this game at a much older age. And that was part of the magic in this game. It wasn't some gimmicky, stupid loot box mechanic which you can see in every game today. Finding out each season what was the new car you could potentially get was so exciting. Seeing it on the podium celebrating since you couldn't beat it made it so much better once you actually saw it again and managed to get past it on the track rather than seeing it from a distance as the second place. It was such a simple premise but it was what made this game so great for me and it is why I hated every single Sega Rally game that came afterwards like Sega Rally Revo and Sega Rally 3 which failed to replicate this simple part of the game that in my opinion is the essence of Sega Rally. Another part that is inseparable from Sega Rally is the original soundtrack which is a 10 out of 10. Every single part of the game had a unique background music. The main menu, the car selection, the setup of your car, every track, the final race, the arcade mode, the settings and the famous The Sega Rally OST is such a nostalgic kick in the nuts that you won't get from most games in the future because sadly a lot of them give up on OST or just don't give that part of the game enough resources to make it great. Now it's time to talk about the bad parts of the game. The collision physics are not the best and they encourage playing the game without using the brakes at all. It's bound to happen when you have a game with no car damage mechanic and no good collision system making power sliding with walls a viable method on most tracks and you can beat 7 out of the 10 seasons easily without using any of the brakes. The game has no reverse button, your car can only move forward which makes sense in an arcade game with time limit but still it's kinda weird to think of a racing game where you can't drive in reverse especially when you have so many options in terms of gear and car setup. The game doesn't really encourage you to pick different cars but rather forces you down that road on certain seasons which arbitrarily unbeaten by some cars even though you can beat it with a different car that has the same specs and feel to it. I beat the entire game with the Lancia Stratus which is my favorite again but you can't do it however with all the cars in the game like the smaller Renault which is an awful car in my opinion and it's a shame. I know it's hard to give every car a fair shake and a good balance or viability but you can't have an 18 car roster dominated by a few cars like the Stratus or the Peugeot 205. Moving away from the bad things, this game actually had a ton of modes, including a multiplayer mode which I never got to experience since I didn't have any internet or a computer back then, so I can't review the multiplayer side of it. You do however have local multiplayer in the form of a split screen mode which I rarely got to play. You also have the car profile section with detailed analysis of each car. Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 3 but Lancer Evolution made its debut in the WRC. The game actually saving your replay when you beat it in the arcade mode and in the 10th season, which is honestly a lot from a game that was created in 99, and the time attack mode, which can all be put together into a box named Things I Didn't Play With in Sega Rally 2, but are still good additions to it because it's extra features. The final verdict for me on this game is a solid 10 out of 10. Not only is it a great sequel by any measure since it improves on anything from the previous version, this is a timeless piece that is always fun to come back to and play. And this time when I reviewed it, it's the first playthrough where I actually got to beat the arcade mode in the game which is very tough. While I never experienced the more impressive looking arcade version of Sega Rally 2 that has 4 more different cars in it, I don't feel like I have to. Sega Rally 2 is a great game since it combined the original Sega Rally which is an arcade legend into a fully fledged game that isn't over as soon as you beat the arcade mode. It added new features, gave you a ton of small details to appreciate which back in the day gave the game a ton of depth. 
This is my second favorite Dreamcast game and in my opinion probably the second or third best Dreamcast title only beaten by Shenmue 1 and Shenmue 2. If you've never tried the arcade version of the original Sega Rally, you should. And even though I've never played the arcade version of the second Sega Rally, I'm sure it's great and you should definitely check it out as well. I would love to see Sega Rally 3 coming out and recapturing the essence of this game or an HD remake of Sega Rally 1 and Sega Rally 2 which I will fully support. But not another abomination like Sega Rally Revo or Sega Rally 3 which is only related to the series by name. Thank you guys for watching, I would much appreciate it if you drop a like on this video, share your opinions in the comments, subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss any of the newest videos and if you want to support this channel check out its Patreon page. Thank you again for watching, I'll see you in the next one.